Now, with those logistics out of the way, okay, good. Thanks for the thanks for the cheers, Zero Sploits. I appreciate that. Um, with that out of the way, I am incredibly excited to have my special guest for the night on. Um, a former uh, Air Force warrior, uh, cyber warfare operator, and CEO of the premier security company with expertise in industrial control systems and operational technology. He is, you know, what I would describe at least the de facto standard when it comes to, you know, industrial control system and OT security. I've always had a high opinion of you, sir. You know, he's advised several fortune companies. He's been, he's had a cameo appearance on Vice's cyber war documentary TV series. Uh, thank you for your service in the United States Air Force, Rob. And on behalf of all of our viewers, I'd like to thank you for the show. So thank you very much. Would you like to, to say a few words to everybody on the stream? Look, I, I just want to say thanks, especially on what's been undoubtedly uh, a crazy week for everybody. Um, so for folks that are sticking in there and uh, participating and asking questions and hanging out tonight, uh, definitely appreciate it, as well as the folks uh, here in the future that are downloading it. Um, so no, n nothing more than, than appreciation to be here, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have some fun tonight. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, John Moore um, and the whole Secure West Virginia team for their support and viewership. Hope you guys had a fantastic conference. Uh, the speaker lineups sounded amazing. The CTF prizes uh, sounded amazing. Um, congrats to all the CTF winners. Um, it sounded like a fantastic, fantastic conference. So uh, uh, hopefully everybody had fun there. Um, we're gonna do a few pieces of community news like we always do, uh, but I will try to keep it brief tonight as we do have uh, do have Rob in this segment. I wanna, I wanna give him as much uh, uh, airtime as possible. Um, remember you, the community, determines when our next giveaway is. Uh, we are a week into our giveaway, and so we'll need everybody's hype and excitement to get those hacked planet scores in. If everybody draws their attention down uh, in your stream chat, you'll see a green and black icon labeled hacked planets, uh, meaning that if you if, if everyone participates and we get to our goal mid-month, for example, we'll, uh, we'll be able to do our giveaways faster. So how do you participate? I'm so glad you asked. Um, as you participate in chat, you'll see uh, that you accumulate points down in the, uh, down in the bottom screen down there. Um, as you accumulate those points, you can redeem those points for things like suggesting polls, uh, rating fellow streamers, unlocking uh, subscriber emotes. You know, um, what we've also added some filler redemptions, like asking a priority question. As you can see, chat gets a little out of hand sometimes, and so uh, you know, sometimes questions uh, can get lost, and so you can ask a priority question, or you can even you know turn on emote only uh, chat for a little while if you want to. You can also, as you see, we've got folks who do bulk contributions. The bottom line is. The more you the more you chat, the more you participate, the more things we give away. When we give things away, everybody's happy. When you're happy, it's the cycle of life. So hack the planet. So really, as promised, that's honestly the only uh, real community news uh, that, uh, that that I want to get into. Um, let's let's hop into some cybersecurity stuff, Rob, and let's just kind of chat about it a little bit. Before we do get started, um, hopefully it'll let us do this since we're in subscriber only mode. Um, Actually, let me check with the moderators. I think okay. So the moderators are telling me that they banned. They think they banned all the, uh, all the uh, the the. We'll turn off. Uh, we'll turn off subscriber only mode, and we'll see how this uh, how this goes with chat. All right. So before we get started, I did want to kind of since we do have um, since we do have Rob Lee here, we do want to kind of talk about some things. I do want to kind of start with a poll. Um, I appreciate it. this is why I love my moderators, Rob. They're they're on point with everything. Yeah, no, they were they were quick. That they was, were quick. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> this is this is awesome. So so thank you thank you all for that very quickly. So we're gonna jump right into a poll real quick. Um, since we are kind of talking about um, uh, you know, a little bit of industrial control systems, Rob. I know we were gonna talk about you know ICS, OT, some threat intel, just general cyber stuff. Um, but I did want to start off with a poll. Um, do you think that your country's Actually, is that the is that the poll that I wanted to do? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Do you think that your country's critical infrastructure? Oh, that's why it's because it's. Do you think your that's what it was going to do? Do you currently think? Wow, that was failed. Do you think your infrastructure, your country's infrastructure, is secure? Country's infrastructure is secure. Yes or no. I do want to kind of see where where the community thinks that they are. So we are going to run a five minute poll real quick to see where they think that uh, their country's uh, infrastructure really is. Um, but before we do that, let's level set really the playing field, if you will, Rob. Um, can you really kind of explain for folks, um, you know, what OT, ICS cybersecurity is and why it's important? Yeah, sure. No, it's a good question. So I think 
you know, most companies around the world and most folks around the world, when you talk about ICS, industrial control systems or OT, operations technology, I think the first thing that comes to mind is like electric power, maybe oil and gas. Sometimes they start thinking manufacturing. Um, the reality is those networks, those environments are pretty much every company on the planet. Um, even financial services will then have like building automation systems and similar, but uh, your your local Amtrak ride in the morning for folks that take it, you know, that's a lot of control systems that go into that. Um, so the easiest way to think about OT at a, at a high level is it's everything you have in IT plus physics. Like that's the easiest way to start thinking about this is that physical world around us, that, that ability to interact with um, yeah, the, the physical world, everything from uh, cracking carbons in the petrochemical industry to transmission of electricity um, to turning on the faucet in the morning and the water coming out nice and clean. Um, and, and so one of the things I'll, I'll note is a lot of attention over the years has been paid to the enterprise networks of these companies. And when we think about security getting done in electric power, um, water utilities, et cetera, they've done a lot of work on the enterprise. On the OT side, it's, it's lagged behind quite a bit, not because anybody has been inappropriate, not because anybody is, is just trying to ignore the problem, um, but honestly, just a uh, lack of understanding of what the risk is there and not a lot of good insights into how to tackle that problem outside of maybe more of a compliance based to that approach. So the biggest change that's happening in OT and ICS security these days uh, is just a better understanding of what the risks are uh, and understanding that those threats are taking place and what, what those threats are doing um, and an understanding that our industries are changing. It, it's a buzzword to many people when they say things like digital transformation, <laughs> um, but you're talking about hyper connectivity of plants and, and, and locations that have never been really connected in a large way before. Um, and so you're seeing kind of a board and CEO level understanding of, oh my gosh, We've got this other side of the business we've not done much with, and we've got to make it secure. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a good time to be in ICS security, um, and, and hopefully we can get some more people excited about it tonight. So, so it's it's funny you bring that up. Can, let me let me get you to kind of expand upon that a little differently. When when people think about industrial control system security or OT security, right? You know, you know, there's al almost always a question that's like you know, what's the big deal, right? It's a, it, you know, you've got some, you've got a Windows system that oftentimes acts as a, as a SCADA system and you, you brought up uh, enterprise environments, right? And in some of the, the manufacturing sites that I've worked on in, in companies, you know, their SCADA systems are nothing more than a Windows 2008 server or even a workstation. HMIs are nothing more than Windows 7 or Windows 10 machines. And so those are similar machines that we're used to dealing with in the, the IT landscape. So what's the difference? What's the primary difference in how you look at securing OT technology versus IT technology, especially when the input output devices are relatively the same? Yeah, no, this is good. I'm, I'm going to steal from my head of Intel uh, for a second, uh, Sergio Caltagirone. And, and he said, because we, we got we get in this debate a lot with other companies, They're like, oh, ICS security, yeah, that's silly. Just do the enterprise strategy. I'm like, no, nah, man. Um, and uh, Sergio got in like a you know, glorious little Twitter war the other day. And, and basically what he, what he says, um, always good when you see your head of Intel, like, you know, Shit posting on on Twitter. It's always, uh, <laughs> great. But uh, uh, what he said was really great. He said, "Look, you know, I'm tired of reductionism. It, it, that's what we're debating about is reductionism. Um, you will not secure the computers on the International Space Station in the same way you're going to secure a pacemaker, even though at a, a level it might be the same chipsets and architectures. You know, these are different mission impacts. And I think that's a good way to to think about it. And so." When you look in ICS environments, you bring up like SCADA as an example, which is, is, is a, a good type of industrial control system. You might have a Windows um, computer ranging from XP to the latest Windows 10. You know, plenty of these environments are actually updated and nice um, as well. Um, but it might have a Windows system and you'd be fooled going up to it going, oh, that's a Windows system. <laughs> you attach it, you bring it out of the domain controller, you know, and do whatever with it. Um, but it's the application that it has on it and it's the purpose of it being there and how it interacts that's super critical. Um, as an example, the ability to push a button on a screen and open up a, you know, a valve in the physical world um, demands that you approach that system a little bit differently. You know, I, I think the, um, and I don't mean this to be too flippant, but the IT security professional who has disregarded the uniqueness of operations environments and gone and you know deployed scanning or patching across these environments, whatever, with, with disregard for what they're actually there, 
Um, that IT security professional has taken down more power sites around the world than Iran, China, and Russia combined. Wow. You can, you can, you can make some mistakes, um, <laughs> but, but what do we actually care about? Well, you know, not to, um, I know you say you go with tangents, but to not to go down like a three hour tangent, <laughs> I'll say that um, the, the first and foremost thing that we care about on operations is what is the mission? Like, what are we trying to accomplish with this environment? And that is, the thing that we have to pay attention to because it can have real life impact you know, safety and environmental impacts if you're not you know ever cognizant of that mission and um, they, they often say that it security standards are written on best practice but safety standards are written in blood um so there's there's a real impact of, of things that can happen in that environment um and and what's important to understand is that the threats that we see targeting industrial environments are different often different teams um, but even when there's overlapping teams, it's different trade craft and different ways and different capabilities that they'll use to target those environments because the outcome of the targeting is different. The ability to, to um, disconnect electric power, the ability to still intellectual property at a manufacturing line, and the ability to uh, trip over a safety system and try to kill people. So the, so the first barrier in ICS, I would say, is that the systems actually are different. They might have some window systems. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of purpose-built control systems, PLCs, RTUs, PACs, you know, all sorts of little acronyms, um, and physical gear and instrumentation and actuators and, and, and all sorts of different instruments um, so you, and sensors. So you take all the physical gear, the specialized gear, the Windows systems, the Linux systems, all sorts of new network protocols, DMP3, ICCP, um, Honeywell's, you know, Experian protocols, et cetera. And it looks different. It feels different. And it feels like if I could get through the technology differences, we'd be okay. But that's just the first layer. Then it's the physics piece and it's the mission purpose. And then there's threats that are different. And so every time you peel back the onion, um, sort of of ICS security, you come back to the realization that this is something special and different and unique. And you must approach it in a unique way that understands the, the purpose of why we're there in the first place. I, I, I think I think I kind of know the answer just based on what you said. You said, you know, just on that last little segment, but I want to kind of put a, a finer point on it, if you will, is, you know, as an industry, do you think that we take industrial control systems or OT security seriously? Um, no is the easiest answer. <laughs> uh, I'll say that we're getting there. But I will say it is something in the security community and not in the industrial community. Mm. Um, so I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, um, but I had a, I, I, I run into this debate all the time. You'd, you'd be amazed at how often in the security community, like ICS security feels like it has to justify its existence. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a cool field. It kind of makes obvious sense. Like you've got specialized people for your ERP system. Why wouldn't we have specialized people for your power <laughs> system? But, but every now and then I like, I get in these debates with folks about like almost, you know, damn near justifying it. And I had a call recently with the previous CEO of Dow Chemical. Um, and we were just talking, uh, we're, we're both um, involved with the World Economic Forum. We are talking about kind of what's going on in the oil and gas industry. And uh, I, he asked me like, oh, is there anything I can do for you? Which, you know, he's previous CEO of Dow Chemical. I'm like, well, what can he do? No, I don't know. But I, I kind of jumped to it real quick. I was like, look, man, the, the, probably the best thing you could help me with is there's kind of this debate around IT versus OT. And the cult, you know, it shouldn't be IT versus OT. It should be IT and OT. But it shouldn't just be IT. Like we do need to take a special focus on OT. And I'm a little bit worried that we're seeing all this like, well, it's all IoT. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Like Alexa and a gas turbine are very, very different. You know, <laughs> you treat them differently. I said, would you mind helping amplify that out? And he started laughing. I was like, mm, okay, you know, what? thanks, Andrew. Why is this funny? And he's like, you must be talking to a lot of security people. I'm like, yes, that that's explicitly my community. Andrew's yes. like, yeah, that's. That is an obvious statement. He's like, well, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I'm a chemical engineer by trade. To be the CEO of Dow Chemical, I had to be a chemical engineer. When I look and talk to my friends that are CEO of Aramco or Coke or whatever else, they're all engineers. We damn well know it's not enterprise security that's going to solve this problem. <laughs> we know it's OT security. So the problem you're running into is with the enterprise security crowd, not anybody in the boardroom. And I thought that was so interesting where, you know, we can kind of be in our own bubble sometimes. Now that's not to come off as back and forth as it might sound. There's a ton of amazing support across the community. Sure. And, and again, I don't like to say like, oh, it's this enterprise security crowd, like it's different. Um, I think it has to be collaborative. But again, OT security also does have to exist. For up to the minute cybersecurity news, make sure you follow and subscribe to the cyber and security channel on Twitch and YouTube. 
Also make sure you turn on those notifications so that you know when we go live.